wanted to point out the cookbook cook cookbook club. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you look in the um, comments, comments yeah. I was blown away by this comment because it just speaks to so much to what I feel goes to the heart of what we do best. And it was from the author of the cookbook, and, and Jill sent her a note saying, hey, we're going to be using your cookbook for our first club. And she, she wrote this on her blog, the author did, which was she was feeling really low, and she realized how amazing it was that her cookbook brought people together and created this mini community of people who like to cook together. And we know at least two people went away as friends after they came to that and um, shared their recipes and stuff. So it's just a really um, beautiful connection I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. um, what else? We've been busy, busy, busy. <laughs> I hope you saw the board meeting videos on the website. This one will be there as well. You're all famous. Nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I um, went through the first one. Okay. It takes a very long time. You can do some reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also very proud that we negotiated with our Pebble Go vendor to include the District 39 schools as having equal access to this database. Yeah. This is something that I've been talking to Stephen about, which is for our children's research databases, the primary audience for that is school children and mm -hmm. curriculum. If they are not easily able to use it in the schools, they're not going to use it at all. And so it's essential for those resources that we work with the schools to gain access to them. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Because when you're in a classroom with kids and you're like, well, each of you, all 24 of you need to bring your library cards. Mm -hmm. And then you can log in to the database that we're going to be you using today. Would do a show and tell for the uh, parents? A tutorial for the parents? Yeah, I think that would be a wonderful so idea. I don't know what yeah. Well, this way, we don't have to have all 24 kids with mm -hmm. their library card logging into that database. They can just have it in the classroom. We pay a little bit more in our subscription price, but I feel like it's really worth it yeah. in order to open up that sure. ability. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'm very excited about that. We've been doing a lot of new things with marketing now that we have a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Bike will map. Bike Will oh, Met. Yeah. We're going to be participating in October in the Bike Will Met ride, and uh, we don't know how quite yet, but we'll be a it's stop. A first, it's a first something. effort for them, so they're planning. Right. Yes. And the payroll, so the payroll, also the payroll software, that's all working well with the new yes. stepping into present day. Yeah. yeah, everyone logged in just fine. It's, you know, there were very few minor bumps, but yeah, that's working really well. I did a tandem story time with Karen on the Village Green just yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I understand there is photographic evidence somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great, and for me, it just it just felt good to, to get back bike, on that horse. Did the book bike arrive? No. no. Uh, there's a painting delay. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, they keep promising. I'm sorry, it's, you know. They're going to have it ready for the shovel by the time winter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like winter. Kathleen, you're going to be the first. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's still discussion about buying a new bike rack? During oh. the landscaping project, that's a discussion we'll talk about at the facilities meeting. Cool. Well, I don't think I'll make it, so I hope you guys put a bike rack in there. <laughs> I think it will be included in the landscaping plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was Current all. bike rack's been there for a long time. Well, and uh, Be Betty, I think, sent me um, one of those repair stations mm -hmm. that has a pump in it oh. that oh. You, can, you can just use yeah. for That's, free. Uh, yeah, uh, something like that. You too. could do like a big W and a P and an L. <laughs> We found some vendor that has all these amazing racks. So yeah, really, I still have the the info, and I will def I will put yeah. it to the landscaping um, designer that we choose to right. incorporate something. We were approached I think last year about yeah. someone who was doing wanted to do like artistic bike racks too. There was like they're trying to do different kind of installations around this. I don't know where where they are now, but um, if anyone else remembers that, but the, the idea would be yeah, somehow to create some additional art. Around the function, village or just functional art. I think it was going to be in different places around the village, but they... they, they did something happen to that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but yeah. Sure. That's, cool. That's all, all right. I had. Okay. Um, just a, an aside, the parking lot or the central 
printing is gone. Those buildings yes. yeah. are gone. So is it firm that there's going to be a parking lot there? <laughs> I am... Uh, I don't know that because they. I was told it was just temporary parking. Yeah. 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 Um, I am meeting with uh, Tim Frenzer, the village manager, yeah. in a week, so I will. I'll see if I can get an update. Yeah. I wonder. If, I'm, I'm just out with so them. Curious they promised to get want. back, so Heather's going to be following up on that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, committee reports, Jan. Oh. Okay. You kind of sucked it to me here because I was gone that one time, but there, I'll try to go quickly. Um, in July, on the July 17th bulletin, um, there's something titled, What Libraries Lost When They Threw Out the Card Catalog. And believe it or not, there is an entire book devoted to the card catalog, books, <laughs> cards, and literary treasures. And uh, the cover is really quite nice. Is Leonard cited in it? Huh? Is Leonard Nelson cited in it? <laughs> Leonard Nelson? Oh, well, I'm not. He's, he's a former, former library trustee who oh, had right, a strong right. emotional attachment to Maybe. cards. So when he left the board, we gave him his own drawer oh, really? mm. filled with cards for books. That oh, like. that's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, that's, that's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, this, it's billed as the card catalog is a heady antidote to the technophilia threatening our culture. <laughs> the library, 1980, I guess, when the library switched? I don't know what library. Well, we didn't switch we that didn't early. Switch we had the card early. catalog. I came on the board in 84, and we had the card catalog for a long time after that. Yeah, I thought so, too. We so. ran both the electronic and the Ooh. card catalog yeah. side by side for at least a decade. <laughs> so here's the thought. The easier the process is made and the less active individual thought is employed by the researcher, the less his or her brain will be exercised. My hunch, this is Barbara Tuckman, uh, is that the searcher will get more than he wants to know and much that he cannot use. No. <laughs> so she just, was right. And there's a wonderful photo of, let's see where this was, the Library of Congress. I mean, I, you can't see it all from here, but it's just absolutely <coughs> staggering. Yeah. You know, what it to be. So that, I think, was it for the first one. Uh, just a kind of fun one on the 21st. Uh, they, when they were doing um, rehab in Glencoe, they found in the walls somewhere an old purse. Yeah. Maybe you read about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were able to track it down through a receipt to, for a dentist, which was, what, 30, 50 years ago or mm -hmm. something? And the woman had remarried, left, and gone someplace else in the United States, and they actually tracked her down. And she said that she, what she remembers is that she didn't lose the purse. Somebody stole it. And indeed, there was not a wallet in the purse that was recovered. So, but she she had a couple pictures in there of relatives, you know, and so she was quite happy to get the purse back. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, yeah. and the, the the woman who represented the Glencoe Library said just it was kind of like a summer mystery, and everybody was you know <laughs> trying to figure out who this person could be. Um, Evanston librarian uh, who criticized libraries' diversity to be paid 110000 mm -hmm. The alderman approved the payout. That's mm -hmm. Leslie Williams. The alderman approved the payout without any discussion or comment. So nobody's going to know anything about or much about what actually went on. But it is done. Uh, then the University of Chicago received a gift of vintage Vivian Meyer prints. I don't know how many of you, you know, might remember um, what it was about eight years ago or something, um, this man bought a couple lockers of hers and discovered all these photographs and, uh, you know, whatever else, equipment and everything. And there was a huge controversy about who was supposed to own that mm -hmm. for quite a while. But evidently now uh, they've gone and uh, well, donated it to the UC. Undeveloped film. Mm -hmm. And they yes. had a show down at the Harold Washington mm -hmm. Museum. Yeah, yeah. There was the also one in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's all going to go to the U of C, and uh, they'll research and do. And there's a wonderful one of her photos in the magazine. It's just beautiful. Her work was really incredible. 
so that's kind of exciting. And then uh, Des Plaines Public Library now has an all-gender restroom, thanks to their teen uh, folks, or teen library uh, goers. And uh, But they have like 11 bathrooms. <laughs> so. They had all-gender at the ALA. Mm -hmm. On the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From right. McCormick. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's Lucky. really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what else. Um, there was one in the uh, June 20th, I think it was, uh, that talked about hidden treasures in Italian libraries. If you're interested at all, it's a fascinating article to read through. It's very, very long. But there are just incredible things in this. She visits three libraries in Italy, not all in Rome, one in Florence. The one in Florence was actually designed by Michelangelo. And she makes the comment, if I can find it here, when she goes to the one in Florence that once in Italy, I reflected, and only in a library could I stand alone and undisturbed in the center of a great city and peer into the mind of genius. I mean, she was just overflowing with seeing all these incredible libraries with not the, the books and all that necessarily, but just how they were designed and how they were put together and the artwork. Yep. Excuse me, ancient manuscripts and uh, just wonderful, wonderful look. Uh, the only other thing is that there are two libraries that are in turmoil, turmoil right now. <laughs> the Bellwood Library, mm -hmm. uh, over a uh, trustee with a prior felony arson conviction, and um, they threw out, I think this is the one they threw out the president. And, uh, and they put the director on leave. They put the mm -hmm. director on leave, mm -hmm. right, exactly. So that one is, yeah. That is uh, kind of falling apart. It's a apart. terrible, unfortunate, yeah, awful it situation. Is. And the other one is not good either. I've forgotten where that one is. Zion. Zion, right. Same sort of thing. You know, somebody doesn't live in the district, they shouldn't be there, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, but to leave you with a wonderful image from the woman who did the uh, Italian libraries, um, she entered the reading room of this one library uh, that was uh, kind of devoted to her, taken care of by Filippo Neri, Neri, who was the founder of the Oratorians, and this is their library. He was a mystic of happiness who believed that music was a great fisher of souls. And uh, there's more about that, but she calls, when she walks in there, she says, um, Gothi, there's a quote from Gothi, who admired Neri and wrote a biography of him, and he said that architecture is frozen music. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you, Jan. Um, Dan, is there anything we should pay attention to on the uh, legislative front? I guess there's like so much like... Uh, so it's crystallized to uh, the school funding reform debate. Um, I'll give you the 90-second drill, but... Um, the school funding formula has been uh, criticized for a couple decades for exacerbating inequality right. and not uh, putting the state funds into poor districts, rather than sort of distributing it somewhat randomly. Mm -hmm. uh, the effort to um, move state funds into uh, what proponents consider to be a more equitable fashion, uh, which they consider to be evidence-based, is Senate Bill 1. Um, the reason why there's a lot of uh, concern in the public education community is that the uh, authorization to pay school payments is not it's not there so the state missed its first school payment for the first time in history this week uh, as the debate continues over whether and how to change the state school funding formula procedurally Senate Bill 1 uh, passed both chambers Governor Rauner vetoed it the Senate overrode the veto the House can override it, is scheduled to do so um, tomorrow, actually. Uh, there's a little chatter. They're going to push that back, but that's just chatter. So tomorrow, if um, if the House overrides the veto, which requires a three-fifths vote, which requires House Republicans to vote for the override, uh, then, you know, the debate's settled. If it doesn't, 
then the debate is not settled. And the uh, uncertainty about schools opening in the fall, those that rely on state aid a lot more than District 39, uh, gets pretty intense. Uh, so expect that to be either resolved somewhat quietly on Wednesday or dominating the headlines for the next few weeks. And the Senate also put together a second plan in case the House did not go they along. Did. And so that was but it's a contingency, but as I understand it, it would also still delay the whole process. So uh, uh, the fastest would be if they override it. Right. Um, yeah. If not, the, the proponents of Senate Bill 1 uh, have said that they feel that the governor has been sort of uh, moving the goalposts. Uh, and the latest uh, uh, new addition is a proposal to authorize $100 million in um, state tax credits for donors that give money to private school scholarship funds. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a new item, and it's not clear how that new item will be addressed this week, as it's not in the state budget that was passed, you know, on an override motion. Is that a foray in the vouchers, indirectly? The opponents? Uh, 